Okay, Mark, it's usually sell in May and go away. Usually the market has a rocky time heading into the spring right now. What do you think of the media bias here? I think they're looking short term. The president's playing a long term game as he often does. He's looking at the future. And so while we need to address these trade issues with many of our friends, allies, and countries like China, we also need to make sure that the end result is positive for American workers, positive for American companies. And all we have to do is look. A year ago, I was in Asia with the vice president when we were having many of these discussions with our friends and allies overseas, and they understood we needed to address these issues. So we've seen it happen with South Korea. We are seeing those discussions continue with Japan, North Korea. Uh, we've got it with uh, NAFTA in, in Mexico and in Canada. We're working to get there. And while there might be initial hesitancy, they know this president is serious. You know, our own Neil Cavuto talked to Majority Leader Mitch McConnell just moments ago on trade. Let's watch. I am concerned about, about tariffs. Um, we all know the Chinese have been stealing our intellectual property for years, and whatever we can do to turn that around is a good idea. So but, maybe the approach he's taking is working. But, you know, we've got, um, we've, we've got a lot of agricultural exports. Much of it goes to China. Many of them from farm states that voted overwhelmingly for the president. Uh, whatever we're going to do on trade, I'd like to see it wrapped up <clears throat> by late summer. And so we can get back on message here on tax reform. Okay, Mitch McConnell, with all due respect, uh, he's had a, you know, quite a career in uh, Washington, D.C. He's been around since the Reagan era. Uh, under Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and the Democrats, trade problems erupted. We don't have fair trade. That's the issue. So uh, what do you make of Mitch McConnell's statements here? I understand where the leader's coming from, and I, and I think the president would like to have this resolved as quickly as possible as well, as long as we get a fair deal. And I think we're seeing other world leaders recognizing how serious he is. And, and just to give examples, when we ship a car to China, it's a 25 percent tariff, 2.5 percent coming back here to the United States. Fruit juice, of all things, has a nearly 20 percent tariff going to China when we ship to China, but we don't charge anything coming back. We need to have fair trade across the board. The president understands that. And I think countries are coming together to realize we can get a good deal for everyone involved. And the sooner the better. I agree with the leader in that respect. If we can get a good deal, let's get it done as soon as possible and yeah, get back and to talking about Not to stuff. mention Amazon and companies like Microsoft and others having to share their technological know-how, which China then takes for its own and goes against our companies. Let's turn to the president. Moving on, the president slamming Democrat California Governor Jerry Brown for not fully deploying the National Guard to the border, the president warning that will increase California's already high crime rate. This, as Homeland Security says, cities released 142 suspected MS-13 gang members and other criminals back into society after ignoring the government's request to detain and deport them. This happened from November 2016 to June 2017. Guess who was the worst offender here? Well, it's California, followed by Washington State, Maryland, and Texas. This, as the revolt in California grows, it's a story we, broke, we brought to you first. We've got now 15 cities in California and two entire counties, Orange County and San Diego. They now are moving to oppose Governor Brown's sanctuary policies. San Diego County Supervisor Kristen Gaspar even saying Governor Brown's actions are unconstitutional. Mark, what do you think of the 142 criminal gang members being released back into society? It is absolutely outrageous. And before I came to the federal government with the vice president, I worked in state and local government, and there is no higher priority you have as a state or local official than to protect the citizens in your jurisdiction. And I would say it's almost obstruction of justice to release criminals when another police agency is asking you to hold them so they can be taken into custody and dealt with on other issues. It's just irresponsible. And I give a lot of credit to the local units of government, the county, in California who are finally standing up and fighting back against the outrageous policies that are coming out of Sacramento. Okay, so Texas is sending uh, National Guard troops to the border. Arizona is. Jerry Brown saying may not fully deploy at the border. Are you surprised at the growing revolt in Southern California mostly against the, uh, Governor Brown's sanctuary policies? 
I'm not because they're the ones who are most affected by it. They're on the front lines. And, and let's take a look at this from another angle. I mean, you're now asking other states to send their their National Guard troops to California to do things that maybe the, that the governor won't do, or we will have to deploy other federal forces to California to do the things that the governor will not help us do. It, it is simply just a dereliction of duty. And, and I think that the people of California should stand up against it.